and we see a complete septum, high point and septum, as you can see it here. In didelphis uterus, you have to see some separation between the horns, right? This will not be continuous as we see in this case. And the separating part would not be hypointense, septum, as we see here, it would be more of myometrium-like. Another case, MRI examination. Uh, this patient uh, was undergoing treatment for infertility and she came to us for ultrasound. And what we found was an enlarged ovary with internal solid component. The patient had an MRI done and the MR shows the right ovary is enlarged. It shows high point tense internal in nodules here which are showing, and this is the T1, and these nodules, solid nodules, are showing enhancement and was labeled as a neoplastic lesion. So whenever you look at ovarian cyst, you have to differentiate and find and mention in your report whether there are any septations, the thickness of the septations, the internal solid component, and if it is an CT or an MR examination, whether there is any contrast enhancement. And if it is ultrasound, please make sure that you put on Doppler to see if there is any uh, flow on Doppler, because sometimes, sometimes hemorrhage within a cyst may appear as an internal nodules. So if you put on Doppler, you will not find flow in those hemorrhagic clots, but you, if it is a neoplastic lesion, you will definitely find uh, Doppler flow in the solid component of the cyst. So, um, images taken from MR examination, we see an abnormal signal intensity lesion, which is slightly hypointense and it is extending into the vagina. It appears to be continuous with the endocervix. And uh, this is a case of uh, CS cervix. And in this case, whenever you see a case of CS, in this uh, case, if it is shown, you can give a differential of an endometrial polyp. But one thing which differentiates it from an endometrial polyp is it is not enhancing much. Endometrial polyps will show increased enhancement on post contrast images. So whenever you see a case of uh, cervical uh, carcinoma, you have to look for parametrial invasion. Parametrium is the part of the cervix of the pel uh, of the cervix which is uh, around it. That is, if this is the uh, part of the cervix, you have to see the fat in the surrounding fat, and you have to look for bladder invasion or and for lymph node. Coronal and sagittal reformatted images along with bone window, we find a, an irregular cystic lesion uh, in the retroperitoneum, and it is displacing the uh, left kidney you see here and there is also some erosion of the vertebral body so this is definitely a malignant process and in this case you also see the cause that is since i'm dealing with women imaging you see that is significantly enhancing enlarged cervix in this lady so this was a 60 year old lady with a cervical mass and a deposit in the retroperitoneal region Another case, postmenopausal bleeding, you all know that uh, endometrial carcinoma is hypointense to endometrium. You will find increased endometrial thickness, and uh, you have to see if there is more than or less than 50% of the myometrial invasion. You see the uh, invasion. If, for example, there is invasion here, you measure the normal myometrium and see if the remaining myometrium is less than or more than 50%. In that way, you can tell whether there is more than or less than 50% of the myometrial invasion. So endometrial carcinomas may appear like polyps also, like you see here arising from the posterior myometrium, and there is some blood and fluid 
within the endometrium. Another plate. case of uh, CA cervix, enlarged uterus, abnormal signal intensity lesion within the cervix. It is extending into the body. It is extending into the vagina as well. And you see multiple enlarged pelvic lymph nodes. So uh, the normal hypointense appearance of the cervix uh, is uh, helps us uh, if it is distorted, if it is lost, it helps us in depicting the uh, CA of the cervix because it is hyperintense on T2. So this is not a case of CA cervix because the cervix looks all right. The normal hypointense rim on T2 is maintained, but this mass is predominantly located within the vagina. As you can see, this is a necrotic mass of the vagina, a case of a malignant lesion of the vagina. As I said earlier, whenever you see an uh, ovarian cyst, look for the septa, look for for the solid component and in this case you see multi-septated large cyst look for the size as well and some ascites is also there some peritoneal nodularity also on in the uh, on the left side here so this is a suspicious cyst and requires further workup so this case shows us two types of abnormalities that is an epithelial cyst a septated right ovarian cyst as you see here there is a fibroid within the myometrium here and here we see a mixed density predominantly fat density lesion in the left adnexa and you all know the diagnosis that is <laughs> now primary amenorrhea i want you all to look hard at this image and write down your diagnosis so primary amenorrhea the history is very suggestive uh, we don't see vagina so whenever you have this type of uh, clinical indication first look for vagina and the best section to look for is the axial t2 and in this case you don't see vagina you see the urethra here you see the anal opening here and in the sagittal sections the uterus is also not visualize it is absent but we do see an ovary here so in this case there is congenital absence of uterus and vagina and it is uh, mayor rectitansky uh, another case uh, in which again with primary amenorrhea in this case again you don't see the vagina here you don't see the hypointense wall of the vagina the urethra and the anal opening and again in the sagittal section vagina is absent the uterus in the midline is not present but when you look at the axial sections here you see one uterine horn here and the another uterine horn here but they have not fused so these are the two rudimentary uterine horns and this patient had normal appearing both ovaries so uh, this is again congenital a case of congenital absence of vagina past history of surgery for fibroid and right ovarian cyst. So whenever you see a bizarre shaped cystic area, whether on ultrasound, whether on CT or on MRI, think of the peritoneal inclusion cyst. So if it is elongated tortures with partial septations, then you think of hydrocell pings. But if there are no septations and it is very bizarre shaped, then you and there is a history also then you give the diagnosis of peritoneal inclusion cyst or at least include it in your differentials you can give a differential of hydrocell pings and then peritoneal inclusion cyst this type of tortuous appearance is very unusual for an ovarian cyst So I will just tell you, so this is antiverted uterus. We see multiple abscesses within the myometrium. So this is a case of myometrial abscess. So the first case, patient had a palpable lump. She was lactating. 
and these are mammographic uh, images, MLO and CC view of the right breast, and we see a mixed density lesion here. We did an ultrasound and we found that this lesion is uh, like mixed echogenicity and we find shadowing posterior to it. And this is a case of galactosium. So mixed and you should know by heart the differentials for mixed density lesion. And then looking at the history, then you label them accordingly, according to the priority. Another case, left breast lump and pain. If you have this type of exam, uh, this type of uh, example in your exams, then uh, you, since there is lump and pain, you give it pirates for because this is very dense. A cyst will not be so much dense. Don't give it pirate zero because uh, this looks suspicious and this she is a an elderly lady and when. And ultra, if you ask for an ultrasound and the ultrasound shows a solid cum cystic lesion, you put on, you see the Doppler images, you see vascularity in the solid component. So this is definitely a malignant lesion and it is a virus 4C. Another case, I want you to spot the lesions so on the right side, we see an irregular speculated lesion. This is the index lesion here. It has irregular margins posteriorly infiltrating. But there is a satellite lesion, another irregular lesion here in the upper outer quadrant, some at a distance, right? And then on the left side, again, this is the index lesion in the retromammary space infiltrating the chest wall. And we see a few other areas, one this one, this one and this. So these may be satellite lesions. So looking at these mammogram, you have to label them as birads for bilaterally. Now I want you to spot the lesion on the left breast. We find multiple enlarged axillary lymph nodes on the left side as well as enlarged lymph node on the right side. So this is definitely suspicious. Looking at the MLO views, yes, this is heterogeneously dense, but we see an irregular, ill-defined lesion. If you compare the two sides, you see that this is an asymmetric irregular lesion, and this is by RET4. We also did an ultrasound of the patient, and we find this irregular, ill-defined hypoequic lesion, which is taller than wider. And this was a case of Biorex 5. These are the left axillary lymph node with cortical increased cortical thickness. And you see that the right axillary lymph nodes also show thickened cortex. Again, the right breast shows a well circumscribed mixed density lesion in the retroradular location, some calcification around the wall. There is no need to get an ultrasound for this patient. This is an oil cyst and you can safely give it as a birides too. So you uh, can see these are the ultrasound appearance and looking at the ultrasound appearance, it looks very suspicious. So whenever you have something like a uh, similar uh, cases in your exam, just give it a BIRA2 and don't ask for an ultrasound. Similarly, another case, lucent lesion in the left upper outer quadrant, a case of left breast lipoma. Again, a BIRA2. This is a case of screening mammography. So what we see here is an asymmetric density on the left side. See, compare the two sides, compare the two. So you can clearly make out that there is an ill-defined asymmetric density on the left side here. And this is a case of uh, a lobular carcinoma. I just want to mention that lobular carcinomas are different from ductal carcinomas and they infiltrate 
थ्रू दी ब्रेस्ट पेरन कायमा दे फोर दे मे अपियर एज एन एसिमेट्रिक इनक्रीज डेंसिटी एंड दे मे नॉट फॉर्म ए मास सो वेन एवर यू आर लुकिंग एट मैमोग्राम कंपेयर द टू साइड लुक फॉर द एसिमेट्रिक डेंसिटीज एंड आर्किटेक्चरल डिस्टोशन Uh, I will just show you. This is a case of hematoma, mixed density lesion, and in this case, there was also a mass here. I will just skip this one because I want to show you uh, two or three more important cases. This patient had a lumpectomy on the le left side for carcinoma, and she presented with a nodule at the scar site. So the clinical question was recurrence, and when we did the ultrasound, we found. this hyperacquic lesion here at the site of nodule very hyperacquic and this is a case of fat necrosis so you have to put on doppler in fat necrosis you will not find any vascularity and hyperacquic malignant lesions are very rare although they do happen but they are very very rare and considering the history of surgery the first differential should be fat necrosis this patient was sent to us with the diagnosis of right breast lump uh, while doing the ultrasound i took the history and the patient said that she had a history of trauma and with the history provided history we know that this is a hematoma and these are the panoramic views so when writing in the exam you mention um, gray scale uh, ultrasound images as well as panoramic views these are the two panoramic views and you can see that there is no vascularity on top we see this lesion i will not tell you i'll give you a few seconds so we see a hypo acquic lesion at approximately 7 o'clock position in the left breast when we put on doppler it is showing significantly increased vascularity but mind you look at it big that that this is within the skin this is the skin of the patient right and this is predominantly within the skin so everything you see in the breast is not a breast malignancy but this is a sebaceous cyst as you can see this is not within the breast parenchyma this is a dermal lesion here and this was a case of sebaceous cyst we followed that patient and on follow up the patient showed improvement